how many will be sold, at what price they will be sold, and most importantly, who will finance this acquisition. So the League of Mutual Taxi Owners and many other such lenders are gone. Currently, there are no commercial lenders who are loaning money for the purchase of yellow medallion. It is not enough for the TLC to tell us that they expect X amount, X number of medallions to be sold in the private market without telling us who will finance them. With our source of, for borrowing, there will not be one medallion sold. <clears throat> this committee expects to hear from the Commission on how it anticipates to fulfill its commitment to generate new revenue and what is the TLC outlook for the value of the yellow medallion. This committee also looks forward to hearing about wheelchair accessibility for both medallion and for higher vehicle. We wish to know the taxi and limousine position on a bill that I introduced yesterday here, which was passed by the council yesterday. <clears throat> Finally, since the TLC issue is first for higher vehicle-based license to Uber in 2011, app-based companies have dramatic, dramatically increased in popularity compared to the yellow, greens, black, and livery, app-based Uber has become the single largest, largest for higher vehicles. The committee is interested in hearing about the TLC outlook on the future of this thriving industry and its impact on medallion taxes and the rest of the for hire vehicle industry. I have introduced legislation will create a new separate category for this app-based vehicle. I will expect to hear the TLC views on the legislation. Let me say this in Spanish. Buenas tardes, señoras y señores. Bienvenidos a la primera audiencia de presupuesto para el año fiscal 2019 del Comité de Vehículos de Alquiler. Yo soy el concejal Rubén Díaz, <coughs> soy el presidente de este comité. Eh, quiero reconocer la presencia del concejal Idanis Rodríguez en nuestro medio. Hoy escucharemos el testimonio de la Comisión de Taxi y Limusina sobre sus gastos y presupuesto para el año fiscal 2019 y el informe preliminar del año fiscal 2018. El presupuesto de gastos para el año fiscal 2019 de la TLC asciende a 61 millones de dólares, incluyendo... 40 millones en costos de servicio de personal y 21 millones de costos de servicio para no personal. Esto representa un aumento del 27% desde el año 2016. Los costos de personal que la TS propone incluyen 609 690 nuevas posiciones de tiempo completo. Esto es un aumento de, 500, desde, de 520 empleados a 600, 690. El presupuesto preliminar de la Taxi Limousin Commission proyecta 107 millones en ingresos por venta de, me, de medallones. Aunque la TLC no ha vendido un solo medallón amarillo desde el 25 de marzo del 2014, la TLC nos dirá hoy la fuente de estos medallones. Queremos saber eso. Queremos saber cuántos de estos medallones se venderán y a qué precio van a ser vendidos. 
Y lo más importante, queremos saber quién será el que financiará la venta de estas medallones. Actualmente no hay prestamistas ni compañías comerciales que estén prestando dinero para la compra de nuevos medallones amarillos. Eh, la Liga de... La Liga, había una organización llamada League of Owners o Mutual Taxi Owners, se ha ido y otras compañías que prestaban también. No es suficiente que la TLC nos diga que esperan que se vendan cierta cantidad de medallones en el mercado privado. Es importante que también nos diga quién los financiará. Porque si no hay quien los financie, no se podrán vender ni un solo medallón. Este comité espera escuchar de la comisión cómo se propone alcanzar su promesa de, de generar nuevos ingresos y cuánto piensan ellos es el costo de cada medallón. Este comité también espera escuchar cerca de la accesibilidad para sillas de rueda, tanto para los taxis con medallones como para los vehículos de alquiler. Finalmente, desde que la TLC emitió sus primeras licencias de bases de vehículos para alquilar a Uber en el 2011, las compañías basadas en aplicaciones en, han aumentado drásticamente en su popularidad. En comparación con los amarillos, los verdes, negros y libres, Uber ha venido a ser el más grande de los de las compañías de vehículos de alquiler. Este comité está interesado en conocer la perspectiva de la TLC sobre el futuro de esta próspera industria y su impacto en los taxis de medallones y el resto de la industria. He presentado una legislación que creará una nueva categoría separada para los vehículos, eh, para estos vehículos y aplicaciones. Esperamos escuchar la opinión de la TLC sobre esta legislación. Damas y caballeros, gracias por estar con nosotros. Allá hay un, en aquel salón hay unas vistas públicas desde desde esta mañana y, y van a estar todo el día allí y por eso estamos aquí. I'm saying that thank you for being for, for being with us today. We the other room we has been occupied since this morning and I've been sitting there since 9:30 this morning uh, in different committees and and that's why we're here today. So I don't know if my council, my colleague, someone is saying. Stand, ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner, thank you for being here today. Uh, our, we had a budget a committee uh, a hearing before on, on enforcement today. It's in budget. So I will hand the floor to you. Thank you for coming. Uh, before that, you have to be. I do, you got to say. Good afternoon. Um, please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee, and to respond honestly to council member questions? I do. I do. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I want to start out by introducing two of my colleagues that are here with me today. Assistant Commissioner of Budget and Finance, Vincent Chin, and our Outreach Coordinator, Stephanie Toro, who will be providing Spanish translation for the benefit of those people that have come to listen to this testimony today. Quiero introducir a mis colegas, Vincent Chen, Comisionado Asistente de Finanzas, y Stephanie Toro, Asistente Comunitario. I'll do one paragraph at a time, or you want to read the whole thing? Too? Commissioner, you could use that, the other microphone and keep that to her, this one. Thank you for that suggestion. Okay. Good afternoon. Chair Diaz and members of the Finance and Four Hire Vehicles Committees. I am Mira Zoshi, Commissioner and Chair of the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. 
Thank you for inviting me here today to present TLC's preliminary budget for 2019. We are a small agency with a big mission to ensure that every day approximately one million passengers receive safe, reliable for hire transportation and to set and enforce the ground rules for the over 180,000 licensed drivers and 130,000 licensed vehicles vehicle owners and thousands of business owners that provide this transportation. In the face of rapid industry growth, I continue to seek a constructive relationship with the council so that together we can work to ensure that this vital transportation section, sector thrives. Buenas tardes, Presidente Díaz y los miembros del Comité de Finanzas y del Comité de Vehículos de Alquiler. Soy Mira Josie. Comisionada y Presidente del Comisión de Taxis y Limosinas de la Ciudad de Nueva York. Gracias por invitarme aquí hoy día para presentar el presupuesto preliminar de TLC para el 2019. Somos una pequeña agencia con una gran misión, asegurar que cada día aproximadamente un millón de pasajeros reciban un transporte de alquiler seguro y confiable y para establecer y hacer cumplir las leyes básicas para los más de 180 mil conductores autorizados y 130 mil propietarios de vehículos autorizados y miles de propietarios de negocios que proporcionan este transporte. Antes del rápido crecimiento de la industria, continuo buscando una relación con constructiva con el Consejo para que podamos trabajar juntos para asegurar que este sector de transporte vital prospere. I would first like to discuss improvements the TLC has made and our continuing work to strengthen performance of our core functions, including licensing and enforcement of local law and TLC rules. Under local law, all drivers and vehicles that operate for hire in New York City must be vetted and licensed by the TLC. This means they've passed a review of their driving record, criminal record, and have been fingerprinted and drug tested. These are fundamental public safety standards that cannot be sacrificed. With the increasing volume of applicants, we've focused on identifying efficiencies in, licen in the licensing process to decrease the time to review applications while also improving customer service. Many licensing, licensing processes have been moved online so that drivers do not have to make in-person visits as they did in the past. In 2017, we unveiled TLC Up, a platform for both driver and vehicle license applicants that allows them to complete almost all application requirements from their smartphone. Primero, me gustaría hablar de las mejoras que ha hecho TLC y nuestro continuo trabajo para el fortalecer el desempeño de nuestras funciones básicas, incluyendo la concesión de licencias y la aplicación de las leyes locales y las normas de TLC. Abajo de la ley local, todos los conductores y vehículos que operan de alquiler en la ciudad de Nueva York tienen que ser investigados y autorizados por el TLC. Eso significa que han pasado una revisión de registro de conducción antecedentes penales y han sido tomadas las huellas dactilares y las pr pruebas de drogas. Son estándares fundamentales de seguridad pública que no pueden ser sacrificadas. El volumen creciente de solicitantes hemos enfocado en identificar eficiencias en el proceso de concesión de licencias para disminuir el tiempo de revisión de solicitudes, mientras que también mejorando el servicio al cliente. Muchas procesos de licencia se han movido en línea, por lo que los conductores no tienen que hacer visitas en persona, como lo hicieron en los años pasados. En 2017 lanzamos TLC Up, una plataforma para las solicitantes de licencia de conducir y vehículos que les permite completar casi todos los requisitos de solicitud desde el teléfono inteligente. 
We also now allow vehicle owners to schedule their own appointments at times and on dates that work best for them, rather than having to work around a predetermined date and time. We hope to expand this system this year so that applicants can self-schedule vehicle inspections at our Woodside facility. Additionally, licensing staff visit drivers while they're completing their training to answer questions in person about the licensing process. TLC drivers make roughly one million trips every day, and our goal is to ensure consumer protection and safety standards for every passenger. To that end, the TLC regularly visits bases, taxi stands, and the airport holding lots and other locations to update drivers on important initiatives and traffic safety strategies. To recognize and encourage safe driving, the TLC honors the safest drivers at its annual safety honor roll. In 2017, we honored a record number of 420 drivers who had no crashes involving a fatality or injury, no traffic violations, and no violations of a TLC safety-related rule for four years or more. We thank council members who've attended over the years, including Council Members Gibson, Council Member Rodriguez, and Council Member Rodriguez, thank you for the proclamation you provided one year. Council Member Drum, Council Member Chin, and Council Member Rosenthal, and Chair Diaz, we welcome your participation and the other members of the Four Hire Vehicles Committee in this important Vision Zero event. También ahora permitimos que los propietarios de vehículos programen sus propias citas con tiempo y fechas que funcionan mejor para ellos, en lugar que tener que trabajar alrededor de una fecha y hora predeterminada. Esperamos expandir este sistema este año para que los solicitantes puedan autoprogramar inspecciones de vehículos en nuestra oficina de Woodside. Además, el personal de licencia visita a los conductores mientras están completando su entrenamiento para responder preguntas en persona sobre el proceso de concesión de licencias. Los conductores de TLC hacen aproximadamente un millón de viajes todos los días y nuestro objetivo es garantizar la protección de los consumidores y los estándares de seguridad para cada pasajero. Con este fin, el TLC regularmente visita bases, paradas de taxi, estacionamiento de aeropuerto y otros lugares para actualizar los conductores en las iniciativas importantes y estrategias de seguridad vial. Para reconocer y alentar la conducción segura, el TLC rinde homenaje a los conductores más seguros en su cuadro anual de honor de seguridad. En 2017, honoramos un récord número de 420 conductores que no tuvieron accidentes, que implican una fatalidad o lesión. Ninguna violación de tráfico y ninguna violación de las reglas relacionadas con la seguridad de TLC por cuatro años o más. Agradecemos a los miembros del consejo que han asistido a lo largo de los años, incluyendo a los concejales Gibson, Rodríguez y Drum, y al presente Díaz damos la bienvenida a su participación y otros miembros del comité del vehículo de alquiler en este importante evento de Visión Cero. Consumer protection and safety standards cannot be effective unless they're paired with enforcement. So I want to reiterate a few points from my, Jan from my February 12th testimony at your hearing. The goal of our enforcement action is to stop unsafe and dangerous behavior. As you heard from a member of the Families for Safe Streets on February 12th, safe driving can literally be the difference between life and death. I urge you to view our video, Drive Like Your Family Lives Here, which is now shown to all MTA bus drivers and city drivers as it graphically brings home the value of enforcing against unsafe <coughs> drivers. For this reason, we prioritize our enforcement efforts on violations relating to traffic safety, such as speeding and distracted driving and unlicensed activity. An example of this is our operations combating unlicensed van activity, particularly in Brooklyn and Queens and Lower Manhattan. In total, the TLC comp completed nearly 300 van enforcement operations in 2017, which resulted in more than 1,300 summonses to unlicensed drivers and vehicles. Uh, 
La protección de los consumidores y las normas de seguridad no pueden ser efectivo a menos que se emparen con la aplicación, por lo que quiero retirar algunos puntos de la audiencia pública el 12 de febrero. El objetivo de nuestra acción de aplicación es detener el comportamiento peligroso y inseguro. Como usted oyó de un miembro de las familias para las calles seguras, el 12 de febrero el conducir seguro puede ser literalmente la diferencia entre la vida y la muerte. Y le insto que vea nuestro video, conduzca como si su familia viviera aquí, que ahora que se muestra a todos los conductores de autobuses MTA y los conductores de la ciudad, ya que de manera gráfica trae a casa el valor de la aplicación de los conductores inseguros. Por esta razón, priorizamos nuestros esfuerzos de cumplimiento de las violaciones relacionadas con la seguridad de tráfico, tales como la velocidad y la conducción distraída y la actividad sin licencia. Un ejemplo de esto es nuestras operaciones que combaten la actividad de van sin licencia, particularmente en Brooklyn, Queens, Lower Manhattan. En total, el TLC completó cerca de 300 operaciones de aplicación de vans en 2017, lo que dio como resultado más de 1,300 citaciones de conductores y vehículos de sin licencia. At the same time, we've taken several significant steps to ensure TLC regulations and penalties set by TLC rules match our safety goals. And we've done this without reducing the high safety and consumer protection standards that set New York City apart. For example, local law set by city council requires us to suspend TLC licenses when a driver gets too many DMV points. Since 2015, TLC has allowed many drivers to take safe driving courses that reinforce the rules of the road prior to the hearing and avoid penalties that would put them out of work for extended periods of time. This reinforces safe conduct and allows them to continue making money safely and legally. Since 2015, following a meeting, including stakeholders, um, TLC does not pursue TLC red light camera summonses if a driver has paid the underlying Department of Finance summons. In 2017, we amended our rules to allow drivers who t whose TLC license expired to renew and reopen them within six months and get back on the road without having to apply for a new license. In 2016, the commissioners adopted a penalty review package that reduced over 30 penalties. Starting in 2017, rather than issuing summonses for minor equipment violations, such as a burnt out light bulb, officers generally issue a notice of violation that allows drivers to fix the problem rather than issue a summons. Further, we've heard your concerns from, we've heard concerns from drivers about receiving field summonses in the mail instead of during a car stop. And I'm pleased to say that since January 2017, we've reduced the percentage of mailed summons from 60% to 15%. I'm proud of the work that we've done to reduce regulatory burdens and fines and encourage the council to work with us in reviewing those penalties that are set by this council and can only be changed through council action. Al mismo tiempo, hemos tomado varias medidas importantes para asegurar que las normas de TLC y las sanciones estabilizadas por las reglas de TLC consuidan con nuestros objetivos de seguridad. Y lo hemos hecho sin reducir los altos estándares de seguridad y protección al consumidor que establecen la ciudad de Nueva York. Por ejemplo, la ley local nos exige suspender las licencias de TLC cuando los conductores tienen demasiados puntos del DMV. Desde 2015, TLC permite que muchos conductores tomen cursos de conducción segura que refuerzan las reglas de la carretera antes de la audiencia pública y evitan sanciones que los pongan fuera del trabajo por lar largos periodos de tiempo. Esto refuerza la conducta segura y le permite seguir ganando dinero de manera segura y legalmente. Desde 2015, después de un una reunión que incluye las partes interesadas de la industria, TLC no persigue citaciones de la cámara de luz roja de TLC si un conductor ha pagado la citación del Departamento de Finanzas. 
En 2017, amendamos nuestras reglas para permitir que los conductores cuyas licencias de TLC que caducaron para re renovarlas y reabrirlas re en un plazo de seis meses y volver a trabajar sin tener que solicitar una nueva licencia. En 2016, los comisionados de TLC adoptaron un paquete de reglas de revisión de sanciones que redujo más de 30 sanciones. Comenzando en 2017, en lugar de emitir citaciones para violaciones menores de equipos, tales como focos quemados, los oficiales generalmente imitan un aviso de violación que permite a los conductores solucionar el problema en lugar de emitir una citación. Además, hemos escuchado inquietudes de los conductores acerca de la recepción de citaciones de campo en el correo en lugar de durante una parada de carro. Me complace decir que desde enero de 2017 hemos reducido el porcentaje de citaciones por correo de 60% a 15%. Estoy orgulloso del trabajo que hemos realizado para reducir las cargas reglamentarias y le y las multas y aliento al Consejo que trabaje con nosotros en la revisión de las sanciones establecidas por la legislación local que solo pueden cambiarse mediante la acción del Consejo. Finally, as part of our outreach initiatives, we've begun to hold open houses for drivers throughout the city where drivers can ask TLC enforcement and prosecution staff specific questions about open summonses and their rights at a hearing. We held one session in Jamaica, Queens last week and set two sessions in the Bronx in late 2017. These are in addition to our regular driver outreach at events across the city, including last Saturday's Lunar New Year's celebration in Elmhurst, where we met with drivers in Chair Drums District. We invite council members to contact us if they believe their constituents would benefit from these events. Finalmente, finalmente como parte de nuestras iniciativas de alcance comunitario, hemos empezado, empezado a tener casas abiertas para los conductores en toda la ciudad, donde los conductores pueden pedir a los empleados de la aplicación y procesamiento de TLC preguntas específicas sobre las citaciones abiertas y sus derechos en una audiencia pública. Tuvimos una sesión en Jamaica, Queens, la semana pasada, y dos sesiones en el Bronx, a finales de 2017. Estos son además de nuestro alcance regular del conductor en eventos por toda la ciudad, incluyendo la celebración lunar de Año Nuevo del sábado pasado en Elmers, donde nos reunimos con los conductores en el distrito del Presidente Drum. Invitamos a los miembros del Consejo a ponerse en contacto con nosotros si creen que sus constituyentes se beneficiarán de, esto, de estos eventos. I'm happy to report that the TLC has made major gains this past year to make for hire transportation in New York City truly accessible, a priority for this administration. In January, we officially launched the citywide expansion of our accessible dispatch program. It began in 2012 and was limited to pickups in Manhattan, but now New Yorkers in all five boroughs can request accessible taxi service at the metered rate of fare by calling the dispatch center directly or booking a trip online or through an app. The program also provides drivers eco greater economic opportunities as they're paid an amount over and above the metered rate of fare based on the distance they travel to the pickup location. In the beta launch period, roughly 2,300 drivers received dispatch payments of at least $10 per trip above the metered rate of fare. Me complace informarles que el TOC ha hecho grandes ganancias en el año pasado para hacer que el transporte de alquiler en la ciudad de Nueva York sea verdaderamente accesible, una prioridad que esta administración. En enero lanzamos oficialmente la expansión de nuestro programa de despacho accesible. Comenzó en 2012 y se limitó a recogidas en Manhattan, pero ahora los neoyorquinos en los cinco condados pueden solicitar el servicio de taxi accesible a la tarifa del medidor de taxi, llamando al centro de despacho directamente o reservando un viaje en línea a través de una aplicación. El, pro 
El programa también proporciona a los conductores mayores oportunidades económicas, ya que se les paga una cantidad por encima de la tarifa del medidor de taxi, basado en la distancia que viajan a la ubicación de recogida. El periodo de lanzamiento suave, aproximadamente 2,300 conductores recibieron pagos de despacho de al menos 10 dólares por viaje por encima de la tarifa del medidor de taxi. We have also been working closely with the MTA to improve Accessoride service. Since the beginning of our collaboration in 2016, Accessoride customers have prearranged more than 122,000 taxi trips by phone or online. And in November 2017, the MTA launched a program to test the use of a smartphone app to help customers access real-time on-demand service in TLC licensed vehicles. Moving forward, we hope that TLC licensed vehicles will continue to accommodate a greater volume of accessoride trips. También hemos estado trabajando estrechamente con el MTA para mejorar el servicio de accessoride. Desde el comienzo de nuestra colaboración en 2016, los, client los clientes de accessoride han reservado más de 122 mil viajes de taxi por teléfono en línea y en noviembre de 2017 el MTA lanzó un programa para probar el uso de aplicaciones móviles para ayudar a los clientes a ceder en tiempo real servicio a pedido en vehículos con licencia de TLC. Al avanzar esperamos que los vehículos con licencia de TLC continúen acomodando un mayor volumen de viajes a través de Access a Ride. Now I'd like to preview the TLC's preliminary budget for fiscal year 2019, which is $60 million.9 dollars broken down into $39.8 million in personal services and $21 million in other than personal services. Our preliminary budget for fiscal year 2019 represents a $3.5 million increase from fiscal year 2018. The budget increase is due primarily to a reinstatement of funds from a hiring freeze and delays this past year, as well as funding for accessible street hail liveries. In fiscal year 2018, we experienced delays recruiting staff to perform safety and admissions inspections at our facility in Woodside, Queens. As we head into the new fiscal year, we will continue to work to recruit staff and believe that through close coordination with the DCAS will make progress to meet our needs. Technology has greatly changed the industries we regulate, and we need to continue investing in technology to ensure we can meet our strategic goals with the best analytic tools. Outreach and engagement are also priorities as the numbers of drivers and business entities we regulate increases. We'll continue to work to improve our ability to communicate with licensees about new rules or programs and update our communication systems to reflect today's reality that drivers are most accessible through their smartphones. Ahora me gustaría dar un avance del presupuesto preliminar de TLC para el año fiscal 2019, que es 60.9 millones desglosado en 39.8 millones de servicios personales y 21 millones de, en además de otros servicios personales. Nuestro presupuesto preliminar para el año fiscal 1200 del año fiscal 19, pero representa un aumento de 3.5 millones a partir, a partir del año fiscal 2018. El aumento presupuestario se debe principalmente a la reincorporación de los fondos de congelación de contratación y los retrasos del año pasado, así como la financiación para los street hail delivery accesibles. En el año fiscal 2018, experimentamos retrasos en el reclutamiento de personal para realizar inspecciones de seguridad y emisiones en nuestras oficinas en Woodside, Queens. A medida que nos dirigimos al año nuevo, el nuevo año fiscal, seguiremos trabajando para reclutar personal y creemos que a través de una estrecha coordinación con DCAS avanzaremos para satisfacer nuestras necesidades. 
La tecnología ha cambiado muchas de las industrias que regulamos y tenemos que seguir invirtiendo en tecnología para asegurarnos de que podemos cumplir con nuestras metas estratégicas con las mejores herramientas analíticas. El alcance y participación son también prioridades, ya que el número de conductores y negocios que regulamos aumenta. Seguiremos trabajando para mejorar nuestra capacidad para com comunicarnos con los conductores sobre nuevas reglas o programas y actualizar nuestros sistemas de comunicación para reflejar la realidad actual de los conductores son más accesibles a través de los, sus teléfonos inteligentes. Overall, TLC's projected fiscal year 2019 revenue budget is 57.3 million, not including 107 million of projected revenue from medallion sales. We are in discussion with OMB about the medallion revenue, and it will be reevaluated for the executive budget. TLC's projected revenue excluding medallions reflects the fact that in January 2016, we extended the license cycle from two years to three, so we do not expect to receive revenue from license renewals under the new, new timetable until January 2019. And therefore, revenue from license renewals will be down the first half of fiscal year 2019. We will monitor licensing revenue during the year and work with OMB on any adjustments to the projection. In the midst of a greatly transformed industry, the TLC continues to advance our key goals, safety, consumer protection, driver welfare, and accessibility. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. In general, el presupuesto proyectado para el año fiscal de 2019 de TLC is 57.3 millones, sin incluir 107 millones de los ingresos proyectados de las ventas de medallones. Estamos en discusión con OMB para los ingresos medallón y volveremos a volar esto en el presupuesto ejecutivo. Los ingresos proyectados de TLC, incluyendo los medallones, reflejan el hecho de que en enero de 2016 ampliamos el ciclo de la licencia de dos años a tres por lo que no esperamos recibir ingresos de las renovaciones de licencia bajo del nuevo horario hasta enero de 2019. Y por lo tanto, los ingresos de las renovaciones de licencia será por la primera mitad del año fiscal de 2019. Estaremos supervisando los ingresos de las licencias durante el año. Tra trabajaremos con OMB en cualquier ajuste de a la proyección. En medida de una industria muy transformada, el TLC continúa avanzando a nuestros objetivos clave, seguridad, protección al consumidor, bienestar del conductor y accesibilidad. Gracias por la oportunidad de hablar con ustedes hoy. Estaría encantada de responder cualquier pregunta que puedan tener. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, before we go into questions, I have to recognize some of the my colleagues that are here today. Council Member Rodriguez, already mentioned Dennis Rodriguez. Uh, Balón, Council Member Balón, Council Member Constantinides, Council Member Cabrera, Council Member Rose, Council Member Moya, and Council Member Lander. Um, also, I would like to recognize some of the some of the people in the in the in the public. I have former Council Member and your City Controller. John Lu, he's visiting all with some of his students from, from the YNC, uh, from the New York City University. Thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. Controller. And also I would like to recognize leader of the taxi industry there, Mr. Leonel Marte, Juan Heredia, Damian Rodriguez, Hector Remán, better known as One to Two, and Nelson Julio Rodriguez, among so many others there. Commissioner, you see, you see how many people we uh, follow you every time that you speak? You see, they are- They, are, they, they follow are, you. They follow <laughs> How many people follow you? That means that they're interested in what you're saying. They're very interested in what you're saying. But let me read something that you said in your statement. Something that, I, let me read it. You said, 
He said here, where was it? Okay, I got it here. You said the goal, the goal, la meta, the goal of our enforcement action is to stop dangerous and unsafe behavior. Can you, could you tell me what is the dangerous and unsafe behavior for taxi and limousine commission? Sure, I'd be happy to explain. I do I, I'm feel- Commissioner, Commissioner, and because in order of time, let's go concise in the, in the answers, okay? Just to, thank I'll you. I'll be concise in the answers. I have to proceed with three corrections for the record because it's important that the record is clear. The first correction, 27% increase in our budget that you said at the outset was a comparison between our actual budget to our projected budget. That's comparing apples and oranges. The actual budget is 47 million and you compared it to a, a projected budget of 60 million. If you compare projections year over year, me, you'll see that our you. projected go, budget go into that. has go into gone that. down. We're going to go into that later. Just answer the question I asked you before. We're going to go into that. I got that in here. Usted dijo que nuestro presupuesto proyectado es 60,956 dólares cuando nuestro presupuesto actual es 400,931 dólares. Eso es como comparar naranjas a manzanas. To answer the question on what does it mean to ensure that drivers are safe and to enforce against dangerous behavior, we prioritize illegal activity, unlicensed activity, and dangerous activity on our streets. That means people that are speeding 10 miles over the speeding limit, running stop signs, running red lights. Let's hold on for translation so everybody gets the benefit of what you say and what I say. Okay. La actividad peligrosa y inseguro que TLC prioriza es cuando los carros pasan un luz roja okay. y cuando van a alta velocidad. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, illegal, illegal hell. That's a dangerous and unsafe behavior. Yes, illegal street hails involve drivers that are unlicensed, even if the TLC car is licensed. For example, on January 24th, our officers were attacked after they summoned a driver who was driving a like, licensed vehicle. Uh, yeah, 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 that yeah. individual had open criminal cases for reckless driving and leaving the scene of a crash and a suspended DMV okay. license. That is a dangerous condition that I don't think any of us here would support our New York City passengers being subjected to. Las recogidas ilegales son inseguras. En enero 24, nuestros oficiales de TLC fueron atacados y la persona encargada de ese ataque tenía casos criminales como se, se hizo fuga en el escena de, del carro. So, illegal hell is so dangerous and so uh, unsafe behavior that, that, that you have to put a fine of $1,500 per, uh, 
This city council over the years has looked again and again at the dangerousness of unlicensed and illegal street hails. And again and again, and more recently last year, they've continuously raised the fines for that kind of activity, determining, rightly so, that it is dangerous. The drivers may not be vetted, the vehicles may not be inspected, and there certainly isn't the right insurance should anything go wrong on that trip. So your colleagues, and now your committee, are the ones that have repeatedly over the years and reinforced that that kind of behavior is deserving of fines up to $10,000. And I think this is the point that's very important, that it must be translated so the entire audience hears it. Uh, before you, no, no. We need to translate in order for this to be I a real that, hearing okay. where both what you say and I say okay. is understood all by right. all. We're going to be here. I got time. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't you dare then to say, I got to go. Because we're going to be here until we finish. Thank you very much. El Consejo decide las multas altas como de 10 mil dólares. Si el conductor no está licenciado por TLC, no se puede examinar la, los records de DMV y no, puede, no se puede asegurar que tenga seguro del carro. You said that the city council was the, is, one, put, is one that authorizing you to put a, a fine of of $10,000 for illegal hail? Yes. For illegal hail? Yes. For I'm going to repeat myself again. For illegal hail? For licensed drivers conducting illegal hails in the central business district or at the airports, the maximum fine is $10,000 per city council law. And when did, when did they do that? It was done last year. I wasn't here last year. But you are now in charge of the FHV committee. So if That's there is a decision to reassess those fines, it is within the jurisdiction of your committee to do just that. Okay. We're working on it. We're working on it. Now, let me go to the question of financial, the question of financial. Why does the agency need so many more employees? That I'm glad you raised because that's another correction that needs to be made. In the introduction, you said that our agency staffing has grown from 520 to 690 in the fiscal year projection. Again, comparing apples to oranges. 520, or actually it's 536, is the actual employees that work for TLC. 690 is what's called our authorized headcount. We are authorized to hire up to 690 people. That authorized headcount has remained exactly the same for the last four years. Absolutely no increase in our employee capacity. And our the delta between what we actually employ and are authorized has remained around 60 people. So there is no expansion of the TLC staffing whatsoever. I, I'm going to ask my question, maybe I should ask it in Spanish so you can understand me. How many employees did you have in 2016? Don't tell me what you was authorized to. How many you had? Around 530. So now how are you asking to, to, to increase it to what? Don't, no, They're not no, asking don't, to don't play increase. With me, please. Don't play semantic no, with me. No, I'm playing truth with you. We are not asking for an increase. We have the exact same authorized headcount that we have had for four years. And the truth is important. OK. Uh, what, what commercial lenders? Adding in system, could you, you plan to sell more medallion? In, in, in you have you have not sell one single medallion, uh, yellow medallions in 2000, 2014. Now you planning to sell more? So you got six, 1,700 left uh, out of the 2,000 that they authorized you in tw in, in 2020. 
you got 1,700 left. So now you're gonna sell, you're gonna start selling those medallions. So my question is simple, I don't want to go, what lender company are you planning to use to sell this medallion? As I said in my testimony, the $107 million that's in our budget for medallion sales is being reevaluated and there will be modifications, I'm sure, in the upcoming executive budget. As to your second question, as to the second part, what lender will you Please. use to finance? We do not arrange for financing at any auction. But as you know, the medallion market is without financing today. Four of the lenders are under federal monitoring for unsound banking practices. That means they had a history of lending money without making sure that the person that they were lending it to had the ability to pay it back. And that's why they are no longer able to operate as freestanding lending institutions. There are sales today. They are generally all cash sales. That's exactly what I'm trying to get clear because if you are planning to sell medallions, I would like to know. There is no, there is no companies out there now. They're all being investigated, they're all being indicted, whatever. So there's no company that's, so if you're planning to sell medallions, I just want to know, this committee wants to know, who's, who, who are you planning to use? There is no, that there's question no there there. would be relevant if A, there was a definite plan to sell medallions. And as I have reiterated, the budget is con subject to constant modification, and we're looking into it with OMB for the executive plan that comes out in April. So that's not a reality today. And the second part is we do not arrange for the financing. It is very un unfortunate and disastrous that so many lending institutions lent out so much money without concern for how the people that they lent to would pay it back. And that lack of concern on the banks has put them in federal, monitor, federal monitoring. We saw this in the housing market. The people that lost were the borrowers and the banks were okay. Could you, could you give me more or less how much a medallion costs now? Medallion sales that are on the second market now um, sell between $120,000 and $400,000. The reason being some are foreclosures, some are bankruptcies, some have financing, most do not, and some are all cash deals. When they're all cash deals, the price tends to be on the very low end. So we, we agree that the medallions has come down from $1,500, I mean, $1.5 million to $150,000, $125,000. So the medallion, the yellow medallion has come that, that low. On the yeah. secondary market, yes. Now, the 1.3 million could be very much artificially high based on the lending practices that were in place then, and 120,000 as a cash deal might be artificially low, but there is no debate there has been an, a decline in medallion values of a significant nature. From, from $1.5 million to $125,000, that's a lot of drop. Do you want to tell me why you think that happened? There's been changes in the way passengers are choosing to get around New York City, and there's been changes in the way drivers choose to work for companies that provide rides. It's pretty clear that over the last four years, many passengers have decided to use their smartphone to get service, and many drivers have decided to work for app companies. And I'm sure many drivers in your district are working for app companies as well. And that popularity of service has taken away trips from the medallion industry and has an, had a declining effect on the values of the medallions. I would say that, I would say that that should, 
Do you, do you agree or do you think that we need that Ubers and all those uh, uh, for hire apps based uh, cars should need, uh, there should be a special regulation together with the rest that they should be also regulated and, and to put them to be accountable like the other, the black, the yellow, the livery and every, everything else because if you have a uh, company uh, like Uber, uh, Leaf, and what those running wild without no one to control them and do, no one to regulate them, uh, don't you think that that's chaotic? I do agree, which is why we regulate Uber in the black car sector as a black car base. That's being okay. done today. There are two places in the world that do that, London and New York, and there's no other place in this country that regulates Uber and Lyft under the same regulatory system as the rest of their four hire vehicles, and I'm proud to say New York is the place where it happens. I have more, qu more questions. I'm gonna allow my colleagues to do, to do questions, but before I allow them to do, do you, are you sure to tell me that Uber falls into the black car category? Uber? Like many other apps and black car bases, use apps to get customers and connect drivers to those customers. They're 90% non-cash, which many other black car bases are, and they meet the other requirements. So they fall under the rubric of black car base regulatory system, and they have the same rules with respect to sales tax and workers' comp and commercial insurance that the other black car bases have. Black car has they have some requirement that Uber doesn't, don't have. How many black cars do we have? Uber cars are black cars. Black, black, black we cars. don't, there's no distinction. Oh, yes, you do. There's no distinction. They're when all it, it, black it, cars. When it, when it comes to regulation, you Please tell me what you think the distinction is between a black car and an Uber car I'm in gonna, regulation. I, I'm going to hold my Please tell me, because you said there is a distinction. It's important that we know what it is. I will go back to you. Okay. I have some of my colleagues, Rodriguez, who used to be the chairman of this committee. And I worked I with Chair Rodriguez very well, especially on some of the items that affected the yellow taxi industry um, and gave them some more freedom of sales and ability to access more drivers. You're working very well with me too. I wish you would work well with me, but you like to fight, so we can't get anything done. Uh, oh yeah, we will, believe me, <laughs> Rodriguez. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, so following the question, how many app Uber cars do we have today in New York City? Cars affiliated with an Uber base is about 65,000. And, and most of them, they are registered as a black car, right? Yes. Most of them. I think that, you know, we are in the middle of a crisis. And it's a hot potato uh, in a sense that, you know, there's a new company that they come with all those billions of dollars. So when we try to regulate here they go putting millions of dollars in negative apps because this is about destroying the small one in order to create that monopoly. That's what we are today in 2018. And I believe that New York City, a place where we have 8.5 million New Yorkers, more than 50 million tourists, is a place for everyone to do good for the black car, the traditional black car, that they used to have a bank account, they used to be subscribed with the Goldman Sachs, Scherzer Lehman, all those companies, for them to continue operating, providing their services. And then for the livery to continue providing their services in the outer world community. You know, basis, and I know from the Seaman, Riverside, Bailey, I drove Bailey, when it used to be a uh, and uh, university in Cambridge. I used to be a caddy car. I used to be one of the students going to school at night and during daytime and having my car at night. So last year, as you say, and I'm going to say English and Spanish, había un esfuerzo por tratar de que 
ver cómo podíamos balancear mejor. Por eso se habló, la administración vino y dijo, vamos un esfuerzo, una conversación de aumentar la multa, especialmente para ver cómo creamos un espacio para que los libres pudieran seguir trabajando en el área principal que es lo Arrowboro, en Washington Heights, el sur de Bronx, el Queens y otros lugares, que los amarillos siguieran trabajando en su área. Y cuando se habló de una multa el año pasado que se aumentó, la discusión primero era que estaba en la mesa, es se aumenta una multa en la ciudad completa que llegara hasta mil dólares. Escuchando mucho taxista, ahí donde fue se dijo, no, en vez de aumentarla en el sur de Bronx, en la parte de Washington Heights, que llegara hasta mil dólares, se puso entonces en 10 mil dólares solamente cubriendo mid towns y los aeropuertos. But, y si tenemos que regresar para atrás, revisarla, I will work to say, si los 10 mil pesos es un aumento que no se debe hacer. Ahora, los que somos libres que están aquí deben de entender que los de 10 mil pesos es pensando más que todo el que la multa se den en la parte del Midtown y los aeropuertos. So what I said that when we were discussing to include the penalty and the fine, one of the things was about on the table, increasing the fine to the whole city, to the five borough. Then we came out with the conclusion to increase it up to the 10,000 only to the Midtown area, JFK, JFK and LaGuardia. I think that we need to put everything back on the table. Should we put a cap? Because I agree with, with the chairman here. You know, Uber is not black. Uber is liberal. But they don't have to follow the same rules and regulation. So yo creo que nosotros tenemos que ver cómo se normaliza la industria de nuevo. Donde Uber, que si quiere seguir existiendo, que se registre como un libre, pero no como están actualmente, que están registrados como black car, pero funciona como libre. No, that's what I said, that Uber, no, that, that I think that we should, that we should put everything on the table. And I think that, you know, the, the chairman, the commissioner asked me before to show the difference between Uber and black cars or whatever. I'm saying Uber is getting away with murder, but she doesn't agree. Now, you, you agree with me? I, I, I have to just say, I asked you a specific question. Please tell me the regulation that's not applicable to Uber, that's applicable to the black cars. I didn't talk about murder. When we want to make a point, and I know, I know you know that, but let me refresh my, your memory, just in case, because I know where you're going. When we want to make a point of somebody doing things that other people cannot do, we say getting away with murder. Doesn't mean they're murdering people. So I want to make that clear. When I say Uber is getting away with murder, I'm saying who is getting away with a lot of things that other people don't do. Now, you know what you did last year with the city council? You killed all those delivery cars. Could you, do you know what it is, 10,000? I mean, who conceived, who, who, which human being, which human being? I think you need to look I think, then, you need to take, to I think you need to take a look at the law when it was enacted. I think Council Member Rodriguez can, in, can give you all of the details about how that law came to be last year and how the $10,000 fine applies to Manhattan Central Business District and the airports. So there's more information about how that law came to be on the table around you than on the table around me. Again, going back to the same suggestion, one is, I believe that Uber and Lyft, there should be a discussion and they should be registered, yes, as a libre. Because if they want to take advantage of the opportunity that New York City provides to everyone, if they want to go be black car, 
go back to the 1990s on what the black car used to be, and why still today some black company continue providing their services. But they cannot pretend that they can continue as being registered as a black car and serving as labor. I also believe, and this is something that I started discussing with the commissioner, I hope that with the chairman also we continue making progress. We should not give those fines to the motor, through the motor vehicle to the drivers and also give this, maintain another fine for the same amount of money that driver been paying already. I think that we make progress, but I believe that there's a space where we still can make more progress. Estoy diciendo que yo creo, yo lo comencé el año pasado, no lo logramos terminar, era pidiendo de que los choferes que reciben multa por ticket de moro bioco no deberían recibir otra multa adicional por los agentes de TLC también. Y de nuevo, no, it's not, lo que estamos tratando, son conversaciones que se han hecho. Pues yo decía, no, cuando uno escucha solamente lo que no se ha hecho, nos quedamos lo negativo. Pero hemos comenzado esa conversación, se han hecho cambios, pero todavía podemos producir ahí. Yo también creo que los choferes que tenemos, porque there's a reality, there's like whatever method we've been used with the fine giving, again, through the motor vehicle, but also through the TLC, I think that we should revise those numbers. Y yo creo que hay que darle un moratorium para aquellos choferes que están en esa condición y que no tienen multa que tengan que ver con seguridad en la calle. Thank you. Um, as, a, as a leader in the Vision Zero um, initiative, which I know you are, I, we've, we've discussed frequently um, the importance of maintaining street safety. And while I certainly agree that any law that is confusing needs to be reevaluated, and I believe the critical driver program is very confusing and it doesn't do what it's intended to do, we must be careful to make sure we preserve sanctions against people who are reckless on the road. I agree 100%. of our council member Borelli and now uh, council member Constantinides you got questions thank you mr. chair um, so you talked about 65,000 ubers on the road currently how many are being added by week excuse me could you say that again how many how many ubers you we have 65,000 oh, right now week. yeah how so, many are we adding per week per month so I in 2015 I testified at the hearing on the cap I remember and at that time <laughs> it was about 2,000 vehicles coming in every month that hasn't changed it's still 2,000 vehicles coming in every month they don't all stay but the growth over time is significant so we're talking about 65,000 today, but by the end of this year, we're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of what, another 24,000, give or take. So we're talking about close to 100,000 cars. We currently have over 120, 130,000 cars that are licensed by us. Um, and if the pace continues, yes, that number will continue to go up. I mean, as, as far as Uber, I, I chair the Environmental Protection Committee, and as a member of this committee, I share our chairman's deep concern about us not doing enough when it comes to e-hail. Um, we need to come up with some sort of rational policy here, one that you know, gets us, you know, we're trying to encourage people not to be on the road, but we have you know, 2,000 Uber cars coming onto the road every single month. Uh, we, you know, as far as traffic safety and Vision Zero, that's not good for traffic safety. It's not good for the medallion owners, that are seeing their life savings, their entire uh, net worth go down every single day. And it's certainly not helping the drivers who are having to share a you know, smaller part of the pie every day. Um, those 2,000 drivers, I'm sure, are not making the money um, to keep food on the table and to take care of their families. So what can we do um, to level the playing field here? 
Um, I would certainly welcome working with the council. As you're well aware, um, this is within council's jurisdiction, um, but there are you know, lots of opportunities to find growth control mechanisms, which is an important aspect of the taxi industry, the livery industry, the commuter van industry, um, but not in the black car industry, and I look forward to having discussions with the council about ways to approach that. I, I, I would I will echo the chair and the former chair and chair of our transportation committee in saying that you know, I, I would have a hard time characterizing Uber as a black car. I think that's a wolf in sheep's clothing. We're allowing them to run the streets and, and in a way that is detrimental to our environmental health, to the economic health of the, those drivers that are both driving for them and driving on the TLC. I would strongly urge us to, to sort of come together here to find a way forward. Um, and then my last question, the Chair, if you'll give me the opportunity. Oh, <laughs> day. <laughs> I, I'm going to ask something a little bit less uh, controversial. Uh, there was a program, a trial program a couple years back, I know you talked about this, uh, a taxi smart card that allowed seniors to bypass Accessoride by being given debit cards in order to take those rides. Uh, I know that was discontinued because of funding constraints. Uh, what would it take to bring that back? Um, what are we doing instead? You talked a little about in your testimony what we're doing instead. How do we transition our seniors to you know, still safe rides and, and getting them when they need to go to doctor's appointments and so on more effectively? So the, you're right, the, the debit card program was discontinued because of banking issues with using the debit cards, but um, we are, and I believe um, Assistant Commissioner Chin can provide more details, in discussions with the Department of Aging about how we can coordinate so that seniors can take advantage of programs using taxis and have more efficient and streamlined service. Are we going to senior centers? Are we working with DIFTA to get the word out on how to better do this? DIFTA is doing that, and we'll be happy to get an update from DIFTA and provide that to you. I'd love also for you to, to come to our senior centers as well and coordinate with me to make sure that we're getting that, because that's the program that my Excellent. seniors talk to me every day about. Is it, when is the Taxi we'll Smart Card coming back? We'll certainly work on that, because that is the purpose of providing transportation for those who need it. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. And now we are going to allow, I'm going to give the floor to Council Member Landis. Landis. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Chair Zoshi, for being here. Um, I will start by associating myself with the concerns expressed by all three of the folks that have spoken before me, by the Chair, by uh, Councilmember Rodriguez, and by Councilmember Constantinides about the chaos and harm caused by the explosion of Uber and Lyft cars, and I'll just, you know, flag, I supported a cap that was proposed by the administration last term and that this council, unfortunately, in my opinion, rejected, uh, and I would still support it. So uh, another possibility to look at is to consider going back to some sort of cap, which we looked at before, and, and I think we should consider again. I also support establishing FHV driver pay regulations. Uh, to make it more possible for those FHV drivers to earn a, a living on the model of the kinds of regulations that are in place for, for yellows. I know that's something that the, the TLC is taking a look at. Can you give us a little update on that process and, and where it is? Yes, we, we do regulate for taxi drivers. We provide income protection for them through our lease caps. Um, we had a very long hearing with lots of FHV drivers talking about how their income was going down due to the increased competition and them getting less work. Uh, so we are actively looking into how we can provide the same level of income protection for licensed for hire drivers. Um, Do you say you have lease, uh, lease cap in Uber? We have the lease cap rules for medallion taxi leasing and medallion. For no for what I said to commit council member. Oh, no. But this was the question that I asked, and she just answered that they are looking at this very thing. Well, we could be Again, doing it. Again, if be we honest, continue Chair. to compare things and, and I'll be honest, without Chair, a real we'll, association, I don't know if this is a productive conversation. I would like to work productively with you. I think there's opportunities for that, but let's get down to work. 
Let me, let Mr. Me Chair, I'll just point out, we me. could what? do that by legislation in the city yeah, council. Yeah, just and, me the one. And we have not, yeah. and they went ahead and had a hearing and had hundreds of people come out and explore the possibility of, of doing it. So I do think it's important to give the props and the credit where it's we due do. in advance of the city council, unfortunately, in my opinion. Uh, the Taxi and Limousine Commission is out in front of us and trying to figure out driver pay regulations for Uber and Lyft drivers. Uh, of course, it would be wonderful to do by local law. Um, another example of that is that, you know, it was many years ago that the TLC looked to establish some form of <coughs> driver benefits program. Uh, it's something that Chair and I have talked about on a lot of occasions. But this council still has not given them the authorization to do it. A court found that they don't have, they lack the authorization to establish driver. Am, am I correct in this, that the court found that TLC lacks the authorization to establish driver benefits, but that you would be open to exploring it if we work together, Mr. Chair, and this council on establishing the, the regulatory, you know, the framework that would enable you to do it? Yes, it's, I mean, it's important. There's more and more 1099 workers that don't have the protections of wage protections or benefits protections. Uh, we did in 2012, 2013 try to provide that for drivers, but the court decided that we didn't have the jurisdiction. So I, I hope, Mr. Chair, we can work together with, with the TLC on wait, both wait, driver wait, pay regulations me, and me, on benefits. Let me, let me say for the record that when you contemplate, when you see the abuses committed to people like you, See, everyone, everyone defend theirs, their own. So when you see how your community is being abused for years, how men and women, mostly immigrant, mostly Hispanic, most of, most of them, being abused with ticket of $10,000, $1,500, $3,000, and you continue seeing those abuses day after day, and then you continue seeing that the majority of some of uh, money coming to the TLC is in, in some such as illegal hell. And then you say, but why? Then when you say, this is, is frustrated. So I decided I'm gonna run to the city, to the city council to see if I could help. I want, I, I'm here to trying to, 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 to help, but, but, but you know, you know what you feel for how long this abuse is going to go? $10,000 when you say for illegal hell? What, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? And then you're saying, oh, this is, this is not a, a, a good conversation. This is the only way that we have to make, to make people listen. Now you're saying that last year the city council decided to punish the, 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 this driver with $10,000 for illegal hell to protect, to protect the yellow. But then, after you do that, then you allow Uber to come to destroy the yellow. So this is something that we have to end. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but this got to be changed. Something got to be done. And, I, and Mr. Chair, I, you know, again, I, I agree there's real, this is a system that is in dramatic change um, and that we haven't done enough. I, you know, I just feel like in a few cases, like with the cap, like with driver benefits and like with pay regulations, there's more, you know, that the, the, the TLC has been out in, in front of us. I have a couple of other questions I just want to ask. First. You're engaged in a lot of initiatives right now, the FHV pay regulation, the expanding FHV accessible dispatch to the five boroughs, which we did at Borough Hall and you had some numbers about, uh, the expansion of Accessoride uh, that you discussed, uh, the establishment of the trip tracking so that we could do the accessible dispatch and the, some of the safety regulations. So all of that is in this budget and it's relatively modest increase. Yes, another thing that's in this budget, which is important, I think, for, to point out, is there's $9 million of money that we can give out to people that, per, that purchase green taxi permits for accessible vehicles. 
Um, in addition to that, we established a grant program so we can help you finance the vehicle and we can pay you every year for the maintenance costs of that vehicle um, four years in a row. And I'm going to refer to Vincent. What is the yearly? $4, so it's $4,000 a year and $15,000 towards the purchase? $14,000. 14, so nine million of the dollars that are in our budget is money that we want to give to people to buy accessible green taxis. They'll get $14,000 when they purchase the taxi and they'll get $4,000 each year afterwards towards the maintenance. Then the drivers can get additional money by using ex being part of accessible dispatch about ten dollars extra for every ride accessoride is using green taxis um, majority of their trips that they're doing through taxis and if it's an accessible green taxi there is also a ten dollar bump up for the driver for each of and those rides so there's a lot of potential for drivers to make additional income and i think more exciting. There's a lot of potential for people that haven't been able to get around the city in mainstream ways to finally be able to get that service. Amen. And I'll just say, I mean, if we could essentially move every accessible accessoride ride to a green accessible taxi if someone needs it or otherwise, we would just be making enormous improvements to the service that people have who are not waiting for hours and save money at the same time. So I'm glad to know some of that's in your budget. All right. My last couple of questions. Uh, are around safety and, and Vision Zero. Um, and Mr. Chair, I, I appreciate your concern uh, of not wanting to see people uh, tax or fined uh, beyond their means. Um, but I'll tell you this week especially, in my, you know, in my neighborhood we had these two beautiful little children killed by a dangerous driver who was not a taxi or FHV driver by any means, uh, by any means. Um, but I, we all have work to do here. Most taxi and FHV drivers are good drivers, just like most New Yorkers are good drivers. Some small percentage of us are dangerous and reckless drivers, and some small percentage of FHV and taxi drivers are reckless drivers. And I, I want to see us doing more to make sure we're focusing on those who are the most dangerous and doing something about it. So I'm glad to see that you also do some focusing on the ones who are the best and reward and honor them. And I hope you'll invite me next year. I would like to come and honor people who have that record. Um, but I guess especially, you know, I guess Cooper Stock's mom was at the prior hearing and she's got testimony in front of us today. And just given where I'm at at the moment, I want to ask one or two questions. I noticed in your testimony that if people pay their red light camera summonses, you just let them pay the Department of Finance charge the, the woman, again, she was not a taxi or, or FHV driver, but the, the woman who killed these two kids in my neighborhood, I don't know if you got a chance to look at her driving record, but she had run four red lights, the car, we don't know if it was her because they're caught by the camera, that car, maybe she's from a whole family of dangerous drivers, but the, the car had run four red light cameras and been speeding in four school zone cameras in the last two years. So we had the data to know that car and its drivers should not have been on the streets of our city before they killed these kids. But because those summonses go against the car and not against the license, it's, we're not doing anything about it. So I'm going to be looking at that for all of us. Um, but I guess I do want to ask, you know, how is the, t in addition to the programs you mentioned, is there, and in, in addition to the way that you see who your safest drivers are to reward them, is there something that you're doing to look at if there are some reckless drivers who are driving around with TLC licenses by looking at the data that would tell us and making sure we take actions to either make them better drivers or if they won't become better drivers to take their license before they do harm. We have a program where um, if you get, and, and this is also city council law, um, and so we enforce it, where if you get six points for hazardous moving violations on your DMV license, you're suspended. If you get 10 or more, you're revoked. So we do track um, our drivers' DMV records. We also have the ability to discretionarily revoke a license if someone has a bad pattern. So the example that you raised, um, without knowing every detail, my initial reaction is that woman would not have retained her TLC license because she would have 
gone past the point threshold. Oh, but that's the thing, and this is, again, this is not about TLC specifically. They were all camera violations, so none of them went against her license. They Our all went against the car. Our speeding violations, when we issue them, are point violation. I mean, they're, they're actual summonses because they're our speed um, there are speed LIDAR equipment, and our red light ones are against the driver. So the record of the red light ticket being against the driver is there. If we settle it because you've paid the fine, then it's okay, but that record of you getting that is still there. If you run more than one red light, then that's a different story, and the, the penalties are much higher, um, and we do track all of that, and we put it into consideration when we decide settlements, when we decide hearings, um, but also people coming in to become licensed drivers, if they have a history that looks like they're unable to drive safely on the road, they're not going to qualify to become a driver in the first place. Um, but, you know, we've worked closely with uh, Chair Rodriguez and you on a lot of the Vision Zero initiatives, um, and there's just no amount of, you know, there's no amount of compensation for what happens when people are reckless on the road. And I do have to say, it's also our drivers that suffer. Um, last year, a TLC driver was killed when a reckless driver hit them as they were right outside of their vehicle. So this touches all of us. None of us are immune from it. Um, and it really is about teaching people to drive more safely. Those are the fines we don't want to give out because that means somebody's posing a danger to others around them. And it'll be a good day when we're not finding people for reckless behavior. So I'd like to follow up with you and think a little more about what those algorithms you use are so that if we're going to apply them more broadly in the general population, we're learning from some of what you've seen. Um, and I, you know, I, I share the goal of making sure our regulations are smart. Um, and we ought to be looking at the laws and finding ones that if we don't think they're uh, aligned perfectly, then we can look at changing them. But I do just want to reinforce how important I think it is that we keep the Vision Zero work going and that the work to target people and make sure everyone drives safely and that those people who don't, uh, don't have a TLC license um, is, critically, is critically important. So thank you for that work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Member Lambert. Uh, mm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner, thank you. I want to thank you, uh, first of all. I know we had recently a meeting with, uh, with yourself and, this, and your staff, and I thought it was a very uh, forward-moving uh, meeting that we had. And, and I, I just wanted to uh, ask you a couple of questions and one of them is for clarification or for public knowledge. If, if someone is caught with a ticket, uh, with a, given a ticket because there was a missing light and they come with the correction, uh, they're within 24 hours, I believe? We give them three days. Three days? then they don't have to pay for the $50, is that correct? Right, actually they're never given the ticket. If you have one headlight burnt out, you're given what's called a notice of violation, which allows you to come to our inspection facility within three days and show us that it's been replaced. And if it's replaced, no summons is issued. That, that sounds very fair, uh, Commissioner. I hope that we could continue that policy. Absolutely. I think the point there is to get people to have two working headlights, and if that's the way that it best serves the purpose, then that's absolutely the way we want to go. And the, in the, uh, in the issue of double summonses, double tickets, uh, you know, I have uh, I had uh, submitted an LS legislative request, and the council uh, staff uh, today, actually, uh, came back with a surprising uh, response uh, to be honest with you, I was shocked uh, that we actually already have a law on this issue. So it basically, uh, it's section 19-507.1E, let me just say it again, section 19-507.1E, uh, um, e. yes, E. Are you familiar 
with that. I have the ad I, code with me, so I'll take a look at it I, um, I, right now. I could read it uh, to sure. you because it's not long. A taxi cab or for hire vehicle shall not be subject to an assessment of points against his or her commission issued driver's license or the imposition of duplicate penalties where the same act is a violation of the provision of law under the commission rules and where such a violations duplicate each other or are substance substantively the same and such driver may not be issued, uh, may be issued only one summon or notice of violation for such violation. That is correct. Okay. I, I do, and I think we had a productive discussion yesterday. Um, I, I honestly believe that the way our critical driver program works people feel like they're getting two tickets for the same act. Um, what's happening is they're getting a ticket from us because they've accrued a certain number of DMV points. They're also getting it at a time that doesn't make sense because it's too far away from when the act happened, the running a red light, the speeding. So yes, you cannot ticket anybody, and I think this is a rule of law that extends beyond TLC. Nobody should be ticketed or arrested or charged twice for the same exact act, and we absolutely um, would abhor that happening, prohibit that from happening, but we do need to look productively at how to address the critical driver program so it does what Council Member Lander was emphasizing, it protects us against unsafe drivers, but it does more than that. It, te it teaches drivers um, the, the penalties of being unsafe in a way that's productive. And today, I believe it does not achieve that goal, and I would look forward to working with you on solutions for how we could get there. Uh, uh, Commissioner, I welcome that. I'm looking forward to some uh, good discussions and to a great outcome. Uh, to achieve that goal, I'm, I'm happy to hear, if I understand this right, uh, that we are adhering to this piece of the law and that what we have is a delay, there is a delay that's taking place that an accumulation of points that it seems to be a, one is causing the other, but it's not, right? Is that what I... Yes, it, it's, an, sure. it's a very yeah. confusing section of law. Um, and the effect is I think people get tickets related to incidents in the past and they don't understand why. And that's not productive for anybody. Our goal is to change behavior. And if you're just confused, we're not meeting our goal. I, I would love to see some language uh, from your legislative team uh, that would accomplish the goal that I think we all want, and at the same time, uh, we could uh, have safety uh, standards and, um, and, and guides, uh, and at the same time, we are able to make sure that our, uh, that if somebody gets a ticket, it's just for that one thing and that thing alone. And Oath is well aware of that, so they would not allow anything to go forward if there was two tickets for the same offense. Okay. Uh, I, the, the other piece that might be here, Danny, it seems to me that maybe there's an educational piece that needs to take place. Um, certainly. We do about I mean, I think we've done almost 300 base visits to, to talk to drivers about Vision Zero, um, but we've also started another educational initiative where we're going to do driver open houses in different areas. So I implore people to let me know if they want one in their area, and we will speak to drivers about individual summonses that they have and questions that they have. Um, and the feedback so far has been positive because they feel more comfortable asking us questions and we're able to get to resolutions. I think I have to come back to what I think is a basic principle. If we're not communicating, it's going to be difficult for us to understand the driver's predicament and the drivers to understand 
where we're coming from. So we look forward to additional open houses and more opportunities for outreach. Is there any way that we could do a mass mailing uh, to all delivery uh, uh, individuals uh, with this information and others that might seem a bit confusing and bring clarity? So we have, I think there's a few opportunities for us to decide what are the main issues we want to clarify. What we do now is amass emails um, because nobody looks at their mail anymore. <laughs> so we have That's to send true. them by email. Um, but we, we send out newsletters regularly and it's a great medium for sending these kinds of messages. So be happy to work with you on some of the issues that need clarification you think we could achieve through an email. I'm sorry, do you do video uh, outreach, like in the emails, do you have a video, and, and does it go into different languages as well? Uh, we do, we haven't done video attached to our email in different languages, we do have videos in different languages on our website, but okay. combining the two we haven't done yet. That's not difficult to do, but it's certainly um, an excellent way to communicate because videos tend to be more engaging than words on a page. Indeed, and to make them short and with a, even with an <laughs> iPhone you could do those. So, uh, and my last question is, uh, and I'm asking because I really don't know the answer to this question. Why do more people tend to go towards Uber than the green cabs? If, if you got such a great deal, uh, I'm a little confused why not. In the green cabs, as I remember, you could pick people in the street outside of the restricted zone. So, so I think everybody makes a personal financial decision. Um, Timing is a little bit to do with it. Green cabs came on the scene at the same time Uber was growing. Um, and there is a lot of incentives that are offered by companies like Lyft and Uber to join, um, to help them lease a car, to help with um, bonuses. And I think that is, is a, understandably a reason that attracts people there. Um, the green cabs, uh, I think, have, a, I know, have a lot of opportunity, but under, getting people to understand what that opportunity is as work we have ahead of us because they can pick up off the street and they pick, can pick up calls from the base and now they can pick up accessible dispatch calls and they can pick up accessoride calls. So their opportunities to earn for the individual driver are just expanding. Um, and so I'd like to see also with our new for hire accessibility mandate that we can incorporate more accessible green cabs into the fleet because they're an important asset for neighborhoods that want hail service. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. Mr. Chair, I would love to work with you. I know we've been working a lot closely in this issue. I would love to work um, since we, we have the law that we cannot, they cannot be double ticket and there seems to be a gap in time and where they're getting the, the first ticket and then the accumulation, how we can remedy that through policy or legislation, uh, and also how we could um, uh, explore this possibility of putting a cap that I think a lot of the council members, and maybe now is the time to talk to the Council of Livery. Uh, based Thank on you, that. Council Member Cabrera. I have been praying since I got here and I was appointed a chair of this committee, I have been praying, begging for you to become a member of this committee. So, you know, I want to work with you. I, I'm trying uh, to trade with somebody a committee. You, I, 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 want, I, want I haven't you, been successful. I want you and, and Salamanca to be a member of this committee. And thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And, and I'm looking forward for us to get in together. I, I, I'm hearing the commissioner that she wants to move forward in these things, and I hear that I, I think that we, we may have a, a, a blueprint that we could work on, and that would be an awesome thing for all of our people. Muchas gracias. Gracias, gracias, mi querido reverendo, por su participación. Now we have Council Member Giovanni Williams, and with this, we're going to finish our. So you, you'll be really. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Thank you, uh, Chair, uh, for being here. Um, first, obviously, uh, there's a lot of issues going on with transportation and, and uh, fire vehicles and everything. I think there were issues 
before AV, uh, a, uh, Uber that I had, uh, even with the existing FHVs, I do believe Uber is not regulated enough. I did support the cap. I can see why people are frustrated, particularly green cabs. I mean, I, I want to honor their experience. They were told something, it's not true, um, and a lot of them are, are losing money. And so we, we have to find a way to address that. Um, and I, I think we got to move a little faster with the way we exist to incorporate the Ubers and the Lyfts that do, I think, have an unfair advantage. So I'm hoping we can uh, work that out. My, my, uh, the focus on my question is about uh, uh, community vans and uh, commonly called dollar vans. Um, but I just want to thank you personally and the TLC in general. Uh, we have worked uh, a lot to try to bring them out from the shadows. And we passed some bills, uh, and shout out to Councilmember Danique Miller and former Councilmember Comrie uh, for the work uh, that they did, and the, on, uh, the chair of the larger committee, Donald Rodriguez, for the work and, and making sure we can bring some of them out of the shadows. I know there's a lot of work still left to be done. The city often goes to them in times of emergencies and then kind of ignores them um, during those times. But, uh, I know you've had some, some issues with enforcement. So thank you. I know there's been stepped up some, some enforcement. Uh, I think we have to do some more and we have to get the NYPD uh, to work uh, more in concert. Um, there was an incident where I had to jump in uh, to help a TLC agent that was having a tough time with a bunch of drivers uh, that, ha that were around them. And we have made it so that we can hopefully get uh, the uh, illegal van drivers, the ones who don't have insurance, who have, don't have licenses, to come into the fold uh, to get those licenses. I, I never want to stop people from making a dollar, and I hate that we're, we seem to be pitting people uh, for pennies when there's, there's funding out there, so I want to make sure everybody has access. But of course, we can't have people in cars and, and, and vans with no insurances, no licenses, that's a problem. Uh, but I know the enforcement has been an issue and we're uh, working uh, on a bill to try to uh, deal with that issue. I just wanna know if you can speak about that for a little while. So the issue with enforcement is we can't stop a van that seats more than 20 people and more and more we're seeing illegal operators using larger and larger vehicles um, and really they cause an even worse safety issue because more people are in there, more people are at risk. So what um, we've had great conversations as, as well as with Council Member Miller on expanding our authority on enforcement to vehicles that are above 20 seats and that way we can pull over these illegal operators. Combine that with our ability to seize and forfeit these vehicles, which we've had success um, seizing and forfeiting commuter vans that are operating illegally. I think it would be a benefit to the communities that rely on commuter vans um, to help ensure that they, what they have is actually safe and legal service. Uh, thank you, and of course, uh, for me, um, the bigger a thing is, the more I think we have to pay attention to it. So these vans are getting bigger and bigger. They could endanger more and more people. Uh, so we do have a bill that we're putting forward to try to uh, deal with that. I, I thank the chair, as of now, uh, is supportive of that, and hopefully we can get it uh, passed through as soon as uh, the bill uh, comes to fruition. Uh, so I appreciate that, um, and I do want to let NYPD know that we do need uh, some additional assistance in that since folks are endangered. And so people who are listening, there are uh, dollar vans, commuter vans that have TLC licenses. I think there's a, a logo that's on them. Um, they have insurance. We want to make sure that it, uh, the public is aware of that and those are the ones that we seek out. For the folks that are not out there, I, I understand everybody needs to make money, but we have to protect um, our uh, community. So please, there are a lot of available legal ways to do this, so please come into the fold so we can assist in doing that. Uh, lastly, I know particularly with the L train shutdown, folks are figuring out what to do. Um, has MTL City spoken with you at all about trying to see if we can use some of the commuter vans to be a part of the discussion and how we fill the transportation gap? Uh, so I, I don't at this juncture know um, in detail what the MTA's plans are, but I do know that the commuter van industry is interested in pro providing transportation when there's going to be this big transportation gap. Um, and we are, as always, um, engaged with the commuter van industry as well as with DOT, so if there's a connection there that we can make work during the L train shutdown, um, I think it would be advantageous for the businesses that run legal commuter vans as well as for passengers. And as was pointed out, these are also uh, immigrants and immigrant families, the, the ones I work with primarily are uh, Caribbean. I do want to shout out also Councilmember Margaret Chin 
and uh, Peter Kuhl, who supported it as well. There is a large population of uh, commuter vans that are uh, Chinese as well. Um, I just want to know there's a new industry coming in um, that looks like a commuter van and operates similarly. They have a different platform. I just want to uh, put out there again, I, I want to make sure that um, immigrants and black and brown people who have built something that people are now trying to emulate are not left out in the cold as uh, uh, new new people come in. And so that's a big thing that I'm watching for and we'll continue uh, to keep eyes on. But I just want to thank you so far for the partnership we've had dealing on this and thank you, Mr. Chair. Before I say goodbye to you, Commissioner, I would like to express my appreciation to council member, to, to all the council members that attended this meeting. I would like to uh, express my appreciation to <coughs> council speaker Corey Johnson, Mr. Corey Johnson, for assigning the assigning this committee to me and to my staff, to the my staff of the city council, the council, Christopher Lee, Mr. Christopher Lee, Malak, and all the members that helped me out and to all the, the members of the community concerned with the taxi issues. Thank you to all of you. Commissioner, you've been here four hours. That's amazing. I have to congratulate you on that. And this committee is here to work, to find solution, work together. I, I tried that when I, when I was a state senator, meeting with you, and then I'm now here with the committee you saw all the members of the city council that came by, spread that support for, for what we're doing. And we will continue doing, and we will continue working together. You have the last word. <coughs> thank you for the time, and thank you for your interest in the important issues, and I look forward to a productive working relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Now we have some members of the public that would like to testify. If they still want it. <laughs> uh. Let me see who we are. <clears throat> Nicole Epstein, Cassandra Perez, Sil Silvestre Cofresi. Deborah, 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 Cassandra Perez, and Nicola S. Whoever is there here, please have a seat. Three more after that. Yeah, hold this until they finish. Okay, we're going to give you, now we're calling the time. Nicole Epstein. Okay, Cassandra Perez de Cassandra Perez de Sur. And Silvestre Cofresi, the board. Those three, I'm gonna give you two minutes each. Two minutes each. Uh, this, this is more than two minutes. See if you could go. All right, this is who? Testimony of the committee with taxi safety. Uh, are you the, the three of you the same? Different, different group. So who's this one? Okay. And you, and you are? Cassandra Pérez. Cassandra Pérez. Okay, Cassandra, go ahead. Okay. I'm uh, speaking on behalf of David Beyer. He is the president of the Committee for Taxi Safety, which is comprised of licensed lease agents, which manage approximately 20% of the New York City taxi medallions. Together, they work to provide transportation to 400,000 people every day. We thank you for this opportunity to testify concerning the proposed budget and the fiscal impacts on the yellow taxi industry. 
First, yellow cabs have the highest accessibility requirement for any for hire service in New York City. The TLC, when implementing its 50% accessibility requirement, which was prior to the advent of ride hailing companies such as Uber and Lyft, did not plan for the consequences of imposing a regulation on just one segment. The result has been that the yellow taxi drivers have left our segment in staggering numbers. This has resulted in over 800 valuable medallions being kept off the road and put in storage due to lack of drivers who prefer driving non-acceptable vehicles, plus dozens of accessible vehicles sitting idle at garages on any given day. The city has not come up with any coherent program or policy to get these vehicles out of storage and onto the streets. This continues to jeopardize the success of the city's 50% taxi accessibility settlement. Instead, the city has mandated a lesser accessibility requirement for the transportation network companies, which has received lukewarm support at best from disability advocates. This nebulous plan requires all for hire companies to provide 25% of their rides, not vehicles, in accessible vehicles, starting with just 5% of rides for 12 months commencing July 1st, and an increase of 5% each year following. This plan does nothing to help to get the, ex the existing accessible medallions out of storage, nor does it help fulfill the 50% mandate. Next, tickets as revenue. The mayor's 2018 fiscal year executive budget projection indicates that the city expects $11.6 million in revenue for the for hire industry in summonses and fines, which is an increase of $1.1 million from fiscal year 2017. This significant increase in revenue has hurt drivers and added to a deep distrust between drivers and the city and raises questions concerning the city's motives. Are these summonses issued for public safety concerns, or is the city looking rather to maximize revenue by raising as many tickets as, by issuing as many tickets as possible? Instead, the punitive approach that the city has invoked, the city and the TLC need a more sustainable model of generating revenue and to produce measures that support the industry fairly, to put medallion owners and drivers back on the road. Additionally, without dispute or doubt, Everyone is aware that cars for hire illegally cruise the exclusionary zone in Manhattan to obtain passengers. I'm not. Uh, you know what that means, right? <laughs> that means Time's the up. two minutes are up. Time's up. I got a little bit more, just a little more. Uh, I'll skip forward to Taxi of Tomorrow. When the Uber app initially launched in New York City, drivers did not leave the taxi industry to drive for Uber. Rather, the industry's loss of drivers coincided with the accessible vehicle mandate imposed only on the taxi industry and the Taxi of Tomorrow program, which removed the Camry hybrid as an option for drivers. In contrast, 65% of Uber vehicles are Camry hybrids. Both the accessible taxi and the taxi of tomorrow vehicles proved to be wildly unpopular with drivers because neither were fuel efficient or economical, resulting in less driver income. Fortunately, the state last year, and thank you, Chairman, when you were Senator, the Senate unanimously passed the Clean Air Taxi Bill. This will result in creating driver's choice and more fuel efficient vehicles. The state is acting, but there are things that the city can do. Finally, credit unions. Due to loss in value of medallions, most owners are facing financial ruin and in many cases, bankruptcy because of their inability to make loan payments due to greatly reduced <coughs> medallion income or to collateralizing, collateralize existing medallion loans. The vast majority of owners do not want to walk away from their loans, but need help in dealing with the NCUA, which has placed several credit unions in receivership. In conclusion, if the council is serious about allowing the industry to remain viable, it needs to change the regulatory practices that prevents it from competing. We need to discuss and address the barriers to true competition. We cannot compete unless we have an even regulatory playing field, which would also benefit the city by providing additional revenue. Thank you. I need, to, I need for you to try to meet with me and Chris, okay? Okay. Because you have something here that I would like to go on. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Chris, we, yep. we got to meet with this lady, okay? Great. Hi, I'm Nicole Epstein. I'm with Gotham Government Relations. We represent New Yorkers for equal transportation access. So we represent um, disability rights advocates along with about 6,000 independent immigrant medallion owners. Um, I don't have anything really prepared, but first, and I think I speak on behalf of everyone here, so I want to say thank you, Chairman Diaz. Um, I think this is the first time everyone here is honestly seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, oh, for too long, that, we've, that, 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 that's heavy. 
I'm telling you right now, because I mean, I've been involved with this. I mean, everyone here has become like family to me, really. And it's been horrible, um, you know, back and forth with the Commissioner Joshi. Oh, I have to re you know, reevaluate this or that. Nothing ever happens. I mean, I could tell you right now when you need to reevaluate, where am I going to get 90 million or whatever amount of million dollars in medallion sales? I could tell you the number will be zero. So, like, we don't have to reevaluate anything. What we need now is action. So, thank you so much for being here and taking, you know, uh, I've actually been saying it um, that you're like the cowboy who's come in, you know, to put an end to the wild, wild west out here because everyone's 401ks or life investments are going down the drain. For example, one thing in particular I want to point out that the commissioner touched upon was um, the TLC going to bases to give uh, safety and talk to, you know, these, what Uber bases are they going to? Because Uber bases don't exist. They're fake. Uh, actually, we go to them and it's like an empty church with a sign on the door. There's no one there. So I would love to know. And then at the same time, that they go to the bases for safety from July. These are some very interesting statistics. July 2014 to August 2017, there was a 500% increase in the number of crashes by black cars. So it jumped from 534 crashes to 2,644. But then the commissioner is standing here saying how they go to the bases and the bases don't exist. And then, you know, also one quick thing, very important. With the classification of Uber as a black car versus a livery, first of all, right now, Uber operates as both. They could dispatch the livery cars, they could dispatch the black cars, whoever they want to, they do. There's no distinction. Liveries don't pay the sales tax, so Uber gets to do that when they want, and the black cars. So right now, there needs to be a separate category for the e-hails. They need their own thing. There has to be a totally new way to regulate. They can't fit into one of these categories. Otherwise, the industry is going to crumble. So, thank you. I think that you should read the bill that we that you submit. Okay. Yeah, we can okay. do that. Uh, exactly. It's, thank you. Hi, my name is Silvestri. Um, you know, I'm driving right now for you know this app. Before, when I was driving, I used to be started driving yellow car, uh, green green taxi, Boro taxi, and I used to really like it. But I think it, the first person, you know, that I think is the responsible for, for kill this business, kill the industries, is TLC, Uber, and Lyft. Why I'm going to say this? Because, for example, how you think is, for example, when you left Uber, like, show down the price? For example, the people normally, they take the green taxi, the yellow cat, and for go to the airport, you know, we got like flat fare. But when the Uber started charging like 40 something dollars and the yellow car charging like $60, who you think is the car the person gonna ask him? They gonna call Uber. Another thing is like TLC left, they do like the pool thing, like you can share the ride, but that's another crazy thing. Like, you know, this killed the business. This, that's the reason right now nobody want to drive a yellow taxi, nobody want to buy a medallion, because you don't want to invest your money, and then you don't got, you know, like, security, like, how are you going to, you know, working for you can pay? You know, this money, like, you had to pay for that. So I think you guys had to, you know, like, just stop this cancer, because I think Uber is a cancer, you know? So if nobody stop it, like, they keep doing whatever they want. And so always, you know, she talk about, oh, the city, the benefit pool. When is going to be the benefit for the driver, for the people, you know, wake up every morning, like 3, 4, 5 a.m., the people, you know, have moving the city? Yeah. Okay.
Monsieur Hussé. Gracias. Eh, mi nombre es Nelson Reyes. Eh, mi inquietud en exponer eh, esta palabra eh, se debe al gran peso eh, que tengo encima que no me deja vivir. My name is Nelson eh, Reyes, and I have a big concern that it worries me. Pero los principios que me conforman no me permiten a mí suicidarme, como ya lo han hecho varios tacitas, que my aún no lo critico. But my principles that comfort, comfort me do not allow me to commit suicide. Yo acabo de salir de una audiencia de taxi limousine el 28 de febrero. I just went to a public hearing at 28 of February. Acusado por una infamia, una llamada, porque a alguien le interesaba un parqueo que yo lo usé porque me correspondía. Accused of an injustice of taking a parking spot that, it was, that I was allowed to take that parking spot. Y el capricho de ese parqueo para él eh, lo conllevó a tirarle foto a mi carro e enviarlo a Taxi Limousine Comicio. Ya eso fue suficiente the outcome, para... The outcome of taking that parking spot, the complainant took a picture and complained to TLC. Para que en la audiencia eh, malintencionada... So at the hearing, misinterpreted... Me cargaran culpable, no sin antes... Eh, tratar de convencerme a mí de pagar cierta cantidad. Which I was found guilty without convincing me to pay a X amount of money. Guilty, guilty de que lo, usted lo encontraron culpable de que. Eh, un parqueo que me correspondía, me parqué. ¿Cómo que respondía? ¿Era público? Él, él, le agregó otra, él le agregó una mentira, porque como no podía acusarme por esa razón... Eh, caballero, caballero, ¿de qué lo encontraron culpable? De, de mencionarle a él la palabra eh, con J. Y lo encontraron culpable, culpable, culpable usted en ti, él sí. Eh, di que supuestamente yo, Pero, yo le digo... Contésteme mi pregunta. Perdón. Lo encontraron culpable en ti, él sí, por eso. Me encontraron culpable por una mentira del, del que llamó. Ok, ¿Y, cuán, ¿y cuál fue la multa? La multa fue mil dólares y un mes de suspensión de mi licencia. Okay. Eh, ¿Cuándo, ¿Cuándo fue eso? ¿No? El 28 de febrero. Jenny, ¿can we do something about that? I, I want to, I want to, uh, listen, vamos a dejarlo ahí. Yo quiero que usted vaya a la oficina y vea a Jenny a que me eche información allá porque quiero averiguar eso, ¿ok? Jenny lo tiene el caso. Sí, reverendo, nosotros, yo estuve averiguando y lamentablemente dijeron que no podían hacer nada, que tenía que coger la suspensión y pagar los mil, mil dólares. Mil dólares porque... Porque por, el cliente, el... Y no sea, era... El I mean, what we're talking about is that the gentleman said claiming that he got a, a, so, uh, a fine of a thousand dólares from TLC because... Uh, some, someone claimed that he used the word, a bad word. And TLC called him? Did they, did they call the, the person or just you? I don't understand. Ellos llamaron la persona para que venga testificado, solamente usted nada más fue. Eh, perdón, perdón. En el, en el juicio, ¿llamaron a la persona que lo acusaba o, o Sí, ya, llamaron no a la persona, llamaron supuestamente a una testigo, ni siquiera fue él. Y la testigo, a simple vista, se le veía que... Mira, estaba caballero, metido. no se mande. Ok. En la corte le dicen a uno que conteste solo lo que uno pregunta. ¿Llamaron a la persona que lo acusó? No estaba la persona, estaba la testigo. <risa> Vamos a ver, usted, okay. usted habla mucho. Ok. Eh, Jenny, yo hablo con Jenny, también, caballero. Hello. Sí, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Lorenzo Cabrera. Good afternoon, eh, my name is Lorenzo Cabrera. Eh, bueno, eh, tuve algo similar a lo que le pasó al señor, 
I had something similar to what happened to the gentleman. Eh, la cual el, eh, una persona también me tomó una foto de la placa, me reportó con la TLC. In which someone also took a picture of my license plate and reported to TLC. Y de la nada me aparece una carta que me llega que ellos me están mandando a cobrar 300 dólares. I was accused and I was being charged 300 dollars. Más tres puntos para la licencia. Plus three points on the license. Eh, sí, sí, en la carta. Eh, bueno, ya luego me mandan otra carta. Then they send me another letter. Para si yo me declaro culpable o no. Eh, sí, sí. Eh, bueno, yo fui a la corte. I went to the court. Y yo lamentablemente yo soy de la persona que hay que contarme los números cómo van. La persona no fue. The person didn't go. No, no. Eh, no. No, todavía no. Eh, bueno, quería, quería decirle algo breve. Eh, aquí en la ciudad se han filtrado dos, se puede decir, dos, dos plagas o dos maleficios, que son la TLC y Uber. La TLC está abusando demasiado de nosotros los choferes. Y usted ya tiene conocimiento de ello. Y cre creo que ustedes tienen la capacidad de que por, eh, por, ley, por ley de ustedes seamos regidos por Moro Vehículo. Moro Vehículo tiene la capacidad de hacerlo. Moro Vehículo has the capacity of do that and because you have come here, you're here to help us. I'm sorry? Hi, um, good afternoon. My name is Bridget Felix. Would you like me to speak sorry, in Ms. English Ms. or in Fields? Spanish? Ms. Fields, just press the button. While I'm speaking? Yeah, okay. No, no, just like yeah. that. Okay. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Bridget Felix. I don't know if you'd like me to speak in English or in Spanish. Okay, I am a CDLB and TLC license holder. I started uh, driving uh, uh, ride share and also car service. Uh, two years ago to now. Uh, the reason why I'm in crutches is because I stopped on the Major Deegan to help a fellow taxi driver that was stuck on the road and I got hit by an actual car. I'm here to help all of these drivers. I can't fathom how they've been doing this for more than two years with the abuse that TLC has had against them. Listen to this, He's even, he was even thinking about another suicide. Something has to be done here. I don't understand why NYPD, which does have the ability to stop you if you cross a red light or if you didn't stop at a, at a stop sign. TLC is not officers. Why are they charging double for points on your DMV license and then charging you double and also revo revoking licenses? There are a lot of people here that they are um, family. Uh, they, they support their families. They're here taxpayers, okay, they're not out there illegally driving like they want to say. Um, the ones that are le illegally driving, there was a, a bozo, there was a guy that was on a radio station the other day that he claims to be a TLC inspector. He was saying we don't even go after the gypsy cabs because since they don't have a license, they don't need to pay no fines. So then they go after taxpayers that are actually going by the, what they have to do. TLC needs to leave this state and planet, okay? Out of the planet. And then they have the audacity to come here and ask for a budget on top of all of these fines that they're putting. I don't pick up in the street. I do everything the way a safety driver, but I feel for these drivers. I've, that saddens my heart that a person gets a license revoked over three, oh. oh. <laughs> Okay. What can we do? Can we get them out of here and let, I trust NYPD, okay? NYPD is not going to be so abusive like let TLC me, let me, is. So let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Would you like to see the enforcement from TLC be done by the police and take, take care of Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Okay, gracias.
Thank sí. you to all of you. De nada, gracias. Eh, gracias a cada uno de ustedes por estar aquí pacientemente. El respaldo de ustedes es sumamente importante para este comité. Eh, si el respaldo de ustedes, pues antes que ellos vean que hay un pueblo que, que sufre, y un pueblo que en verdad necesita eh, eh, que se acaben las cosas. Así que muchas gracias a ustedes. Este, hemos llegado al final de, esta, de este maratón otra vez. Así que muchas gracias, damas y caballeros. Okay. Este, gracias.